something together. Somebody ought to just sat, saturate your room with praise right now. God is good and worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We serve an awesome God who fills our heart with praise. Somebody say praise. Amen, amen. God is good, amen. So it's word time, it's word time. How many are ready for the word of God? Amen. I remind you that reading the word is one thing. Hearing the word is another, but application of the word is of critical importance. I not only want to be a hearer of the word of God, but I must be a what? I must be a doer of God's word. Amen. The text has already been read. Um, so we'll be looking at verses 7 through 9, 7 through 9. Um, but if you have time, go ahead and read back verses 1 through 6. Walk with me as I preach on this subject. Uh, the Father is calling, and we must uh, respond. The Father is calling, and we must respond. Uh, pray with me. Gracious God, we thank you right now for your word, for this fellowship, for this time, for this service, God, for you filling us our hearts, God, filling our hearts up, God. God, we need you, God. I step back so that you can always step forward. Come, Holy Spirit, come with preaching, teaching, and hearing power. Send the power, oh God. Send the power so that we will be changed, be challenged, be motivated, be inspired. Send the power, oh God. We thank you, God. Your people are ready. Your servant is ready. Come. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The Father is calling, and we must respond. Happy Father's Day to all my brothers, and happy Father's Day to all the big mamas that stepped in as a father figure. Um, and most of all, we say happy Father's Day to our Father with a capital F. Amen. Somebody just say happy Father's Day, God. Amen. My brothers and sisters, uh, it has been uh, some dark days, some dark days. Uh, just this past week, uh, we have witnessed several things in this world. Uh, the pandemic, the impact of the pandemic ramping up with cases higher than they ever been. Been some dark days for some businesses uh, closing down. There's been some dark days for some businesses going out of business. I heard the other day how the cinema, cinema the movie theaters, were, were, have lost a big amount of money because nobody else is able to come to movies. So they have to figure out new ways to show films. But they went from being a multi-million company to zero overnight. In one day, business is going out of business. Been some dark days. Uh, we witnessed protests uh, and the call for change, which is more evident than ever before. Dark days, the systematic racism that is boldly portrayed right before our eyes. The juxtaposition of protest and praise in Tulsa, Oklahoma, out of anywhere else. Tulsa, Oklahoma, outside the arena, frustration and anger and protesting, but inside is praise is given to nonsense. Praise is given to wickedness and even lies. We witness and honor the remembrance of Juneteenth, but we also bear witness to the massive Poor People's Campaign that lifts up the poor and those impacted by poverty and challenges uh, the government and other politicians. I listened to one of the testimonies that said, my children never knew or never drank from the, the tap, from the tap. And I remember coming up, we would drink out of the faucet, we would drink out of the hose. You better go outside, you hot, get the hose and drink from the hose. But nowadays, uh, you have some kids, uh, like my daughter, that will not drink from the hose. 
that would not drink from the tap. Amen. But there are people, there are brothers and sisters out there that have no choice but to drink from that area. Uh, a lot has happened in this world just this week. We have seen a lot of darkness, but we also know that right in the midst of darkness and out of darkness, God continues, continues to show his mighty power. And so we enter into this new week worshiping God and listening to God and honoring God and reflecting and celebrating the fathers and the father figures we have been blessed with over the years. Amen. The father is calling and we must respond. Number one, we must respond under and respond by understanding what we were created to do. Somebody say to do. All fathers or father figures have in their DNA the unction to do. Not everyone activates this fully, but I need you to know that every father has an appointment, has a charge, has a claim, has a calling. Every father was created to do something great for the kingdom of God. And it starts with helping someone else to know God and also help someone else make their dreams come true. Listen, there is a claiming that takes place um, and a comfort that comes when someone like a father, like a man of God, lays claim to something or someone to do. When a man of God claims or makes an acknowledgement of something or someone, it makes all the difference in the world. What the father does makes all the difference in the world. What the father or the father figure did or proclaims has a major impact on our views and on our conduct and how we move in this world. In fact, it plays a large part in either life or death with those in our realm, with those that we come in contact with. It can either lead those in our care to a place of safety or drive them away into a place of chaos and disorder. Lord have mercy. There are certain spaces that fathers and father figures occupy that demands a response. On this Father's Day, this holiday, this holy day, serves as a reminder to the duty that is before us all as men, as father figures, as those that are concerned for the over welfare of a child or concerned for any young person, even in the next generation. This Father's Day serves as a reminder that when there is no father figure in the picture, when that space is empty or this space is tarnished by a corrupt father or a father figure that is not consistent, the space demands that someone Someone step up, someone speak up, someone stand up and show this child what a father is like. Amen. Now this space can be hard to navigate, especially when you are a woman trying to show youth what a father figure is like, trying to point them to good father figures. It can be difficult. But in this space, there is a critical demand to point them and lead them and show them who is the father with the capital F. Yeah, who would never leave you, who would never forsake you. The father who is perfect in all his ways. The father who makes up the difference when all the other fathers make mistakes and are inconsistent in their ways. Yeah, the father who speaks out of darkness and brings true light. The father can send the right father figures your way when you need a father the most. Come on, somebody. There are certain spaces in life that demand a response. And let's be clear. I'm not talking about a good response and not talking about a response that keeps on stirring up mess. I'm talking about a good response not one that just stirs up mess. There are far too many people in this world that keeps mess going, that keeps stirring up mess. You know what mess I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. You wanna know why they do that? 
It is because some people don't put their ultimate faith in God and have to create a false truth to divert, to, to divert from the real truth. Amen? Have to create a false truth to divert from the real truth. Lord have mercy. A father or father figure helps to make dreams come true. A dream, uh, when you really think about it, when you're really thinking about it, it is where chaos resides. It is where ideas, emotions, desires, struggle, and uncertainty are all collided together with blessings, collided together with joy and with understanding and peace. That's what dreams are really about, or really, when you really think about it. This space of dreams, if you will, is what Dr. King talked about in his speech. It is what Barack Obama talks about in his first book entitled, Dreams from My Father. This was before the idea to run for president ever came up in 95. For him, this book was an interior journey of a boy's search for his father. If you never read it, you need to read it. Trying to understand how his African father named Barack came to America, met his mom who was white and began to build a life together only for his father to return to Africa when Barack was a young boy. And the chance of living together during segregation was now but a dream. Obama, now forever President Barack Obama, occupied that space where his mother and father dreamed of, a space of unity, a space of love, a space of equality. This space was a space of possibility of birthing something new. Uh, Langston Hughes, one of my favorite, the great Renaissance black poet wrote a poem entitled Dreams, Dreams. Listen, listen, he said, hold fast to dreams. For if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to your dreams for when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with the snow. This poet and many others had to occupy the space in their own way, in their own time, bearing the impact of a world that was in chaos, but also holding on to the words that were derived from a father or a father figure. In the text, these verses uh, list the six cities of refuge, but there is more to them than just the names. It is a claim, it is a call, and it is a charge. For the Father is calling and we must respond. Number two, we must respond by knowing the location that God has us standing in. We must respond, number two, by knowing the location that God has us standing in. In order to have a deeper look at the names, we must first understand the geographical location. Three cities were placed on the east of the Jordan. Three cities were placed on the west of the Jordan. Each had a strategic place in the land. Each had a purpose. Each had a charge. So that at least one would be in the mountains up north. One would be in the midlands or in the wilderness. And one would at least be in the south. There was not a place, get this, that cities of refuge was not available. There was not a place cities of refuge was not out of reach. These cities were establishments of grace and mercy. Uh, and furthermore, the word of God tells us that God has put a claim as a father figure, as a father, a claim on these cities. He said out from the Levitical cities were to come six cities. Yes, God considered the Levites a gift to the people to attend to the task of worship and sacrifice. Numbers 18, each tribe, each tribe was set aside some land, some pasture land around each city. I'm teaching a little bit, I hope you're getting it around each city that was designated, a designated area for the use of the Levites, for the use of the priests, Numbers 35. The Levites were not only in charge of worship, but also accountable to the local residents that abided in the city. 
they had a special ministry of teaching among the tribes. Uh, the cities of refuge was not a place of shrines, but a base from which the Levites could help somebody. Or as the older saints used to tell me, a place to hope somebody. Yeah, hope somebody in all the cities. Hope somebody in all the tribes. Hope somebody in their walk and in their talk. If I can hope somebody along life's way, if I can hope somebody with a word or a song and show them that they're traveling wrong, then my living, my living won't be in vain. The Levites could help all and hope all, helping the whole nation to know the Lord and to follow in his ways. I hope you hear that. I hope you hear that. We still have work to do. These cities uh, would have this idea of radical inclusion, being a light to the rest of the nation. Furthermore, the Levitical teaching was more than a religious venture. It had a significance, significance for civil and political policy as well. In other words, these cities, these six cities, the location they were standing in were being centers of justice and political influence. Mm centers of justice and political influence. These cities served an important role, not just in being accessible and teaching, but also, somebody say also, also in protection from injustice. This place, uh, the Levites and these cities in direct contact with matters of justice and justice matters. Yeah, these cities were sanctuary zones, sanctuary zones, that God has placed a hedge of protection around. Now let me come down your street and mine. I believe that someone online listening right now or listening by radio or listening by the CD, whatever it may be, can testify right now that God has placed a hedge of protection around me. Uh, there were too many times I know I should have been gone. There were too many times I know I made some terrible choices that should have took me out. There were too many times that God has stepped in, that God has protected me, that God has stepped in and kept me, stepped in and saved me, stepped in and loved me, stepped in and held me, stepped in and hoped me, stepped in and loved me. There were far too many times, but I'm so glad that God has protected me and put a hedge of, of angels around me. It's like the old hymn. I have seen lightning flash and heard the thunder roll. I have felt sins breaking, dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But then, then I heard the voice of Jesus telling me to still bite on, for he promised me never, never, never to leave me alone. Somebody ought to tell God, thank you right now. Thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you, God, for never leaving me. Thank you, God, for protecting me and putting angels around me, God, putting a hedge of protection around me. Somebody ought to say amen. The Father is calling, and we must respond. Not only respond understanding our purpose, not only understanding our location, but finally, we must respond, number three, number three, understanding the anointing that is on our lives. Uh, preach, preacher. Each a city was governed by the Levites. The Levites were the priests of God. The Hebrew word for appointed is kadash, kadash. And the last piece of that dash means holy. And the Hebrew connotation means to be, to make, to pronounce, to be clean morally and spiritually and in community. Get this. And it means to be dedicated, to be holy to be treated as holy, set apart. What does this mean? It means something happens uh, when you know that you are set apart for greatness. Something happens when you know that you are set apart for kingdom business and kingdom building. Something ha happens when you know that you are claimed, when you are called, and when you are charged to be holy, holy. The Lord set aside Aaron and his sons consecrated them and made them holy for the priesthood. Exodus 29, 
The altar was made holy and anything coming in contact with it became holy. Exodus 29, the tabernacle, the ark, the table of showbread, the altar of burnt offering, and all the smaller accessories were anointed and became holy. Whatever came in contact with them became holy. The men occupied David in his military were declared holy, 1 Samuel 21. The Lord pronounced the Sabbath day and it became holy. Places were dedicated and it became holy. The priest's garments that Ezekiel 44 talks about, whoever touches them will be made holy, which tells me the priests were holy and the God appointed cities and made the cities of refuge holy. That means anyone that comes into the cities of refuge, anyone that touches the priest, anyone that touches the ground will be made holy. I wonder, I wonder the men that came running to the cities of refuge. When they came to the gate, did they see the anointing of God dripping off the gates? I wonder the men that came running for their lives, did they see the holiness of God? Did they look into the members' eyes and see the anointing all over their life? Did they feel the anointing of God in the atmosphere? Glory, glory, hallelujah. I believe when they came running, they saw some type of light all over the city. I believe that there was an anointing all saturated on the gates. I believe that there was anointing saturated on the members as they received them. I wonder, did they see it? Because on the other side of being holy is, is acting holy. Now, come on, somebody. In Hebrew, the word appointed also means to show oneself holy, holy or consecrated. The priests had to properly consecrate themselves before coming before the Lord. If God has blessed you and God has anointed you, then you, then I better act like it. If God has blessed you and anointed you and anointed me, you and made you and made me holy to be the difference maker in the world, then we better act like it and present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, which is our reasonable service. We better act like it. Somebody say we better act like it. The next time we talk to someone, we better act like it. The next time we receive someone, we better act like it. The next time someone is asking for our help, we better act like it. The next time somebody says, pray for me, we better act like it. The next time we receive someone because they're hurting and they're crying and they're running, we better act like it. The Father is calling and we must respond. Six cities were appointed. Six cities were chosen. Six cities were given names. Six cities were holy. Each city's name has a meaning. Kadesh means holiness. Shechem means strength. Hebron means fellowship. Bezar means safety. Ramoth means uplifting. Golan means happiness. In other words, if we are going to act like we're holy and be the cities of refuge, we must listen to the Father's calling and exemplify the characteristics of Jesus. For in Jesus, in him, if we are found, he is found holiness. In him, he is found strength, for he is my refuge. In Jesus is found fellowship. Yes, fellowship. In Jesus is found safety. In Jesus, we are uplifted. And in him, we find happiness. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take away. The Father is calling, the Father is calling, and he is saying, who shall I send? Who shall I send? Is there anybody online today, anybody that's Zooming with me, that would declare, here I am, Lord, send me. Send me. Is there anybody that would say, send me, Lord? And I'm so glad that there's a church, that there is cities of refuge, that there's a body of believers that will respond, yes, Lord, send me. Yes, Lord, to your way. Yes, Lord, I will go. Yes, Lord, I hear you calling. And yes, Lord, I will respond. Somebody say, amen. Hallelujah. 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 The Father is calling, and we better respond because God has made us holy. Holy. And if He has made us holy, then we better act like it. 
we better act like it, especially when somebody's running to the cities of refuge, when somebody's running and comes into your presence for help. We better act like we are holy. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the blessed name of Jesus, we thank you right now, God, for the opportunity, God, to answer the call. God, we need you now as we move forward throughout this week, for there are some dark days ahead of us, God. But God, you have spoken out of darkness and created light. So we know, God, that in your holiness, God, that no matter what darkness we see, we can move forward because we are made holy. We are difference makers to make the difference in this world. We thank you right now, God, for the charge that's on our life. We thank you, Father, for being the ultimate Father that shows us and helps us and helps our dreams come true. God, we love you and we thank you. Father, I ask your blessings to be upon everyone right now, everyone that's under the sound of my voice. Father, we trust you right now, God. Bless them. Anoint them afresh. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Family, I want to do one thing and send you out. If you have um, anointing oil next to you or water, I want you to anoint yourself today. I want you to anoint yourself and remember the anointing that's on your life. If you're sending something send my next, right next to somebody, anoint them as well. And right now, I anoint everyone. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. God bless you. Understand your anointing and move in your calling. In Jesus' name. This is your benediction. I will see you next week. Join us on Tuesday for a powerful prayer and Wednesday for a powerful Bible study and also on Saturday for a PM devotional. And we'll see you next Sunday. God bless you. Happy Father's Day, everyone. Amen.